We bless your name. Father, for you are faithful. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for your forgiveness and your grace. We thank you for protecting us. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for every member of River of Life. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our leaders. We thank you for this nation. We thank you for the peace you are giving the whole world. We commit this service into your hand. We ask for your awesome presence. We ask that you give us a song that will not go out here the same. Father, we ask that you will bless us, that you, you increase the, and enlarge our coast, that your name and your name alone will be glorified. Blessed be your name, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Are we excited to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? I want us to lift up our voices and just begin to say something to him. Hallelujah. Just begin to lift up your voice, sing a new song unto the Lord. Sing a new song unto him. Let's lift up our voices and begin to bless his holy name. The Bible says that God has given Jesus a name that is above all names. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Lord. Thank him for a brand new month. Thank him for January. He saw us throughout February, March, and the month of April, the fourth month of the year. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor and give him adoration. There is none like him. There is no one to be compared to him. Is the reason why you are alive. Is the reason why you are living. Give him praise and give him glory. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I cannot hear your amen. All right, good morning, church. Happy New Month. Uh, we welcome, welcome us to the fourth month of the year, 2024, and we'll be praying this morning. John chapter 4 and verse 35. Media, please help us. John chapter 4, verse 35, the message translation. John 4, 35, strategic scripture. As you look around now, wouldn't you say that in about four months, in about four months, it will be time for harvest? Well, I'm telling you to open your eyes and take a good look at what's right in front of you. These Samaritan fields are ripe. It's harvest time. I want you to turn to your neighbor, to your left, to your right. Say to them that it's the time of harvest. It's your season of harvest. Are we ready to pray? Say, Father. Say, my Father. Every devourer, every power assigned against my harvest, die by fire. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, 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 pray. It's your harvest time. It's your harvest season. I will enjoy my harvest. Pratota. Harvest time is celebration time. Harvest time is dominion time. I will enjoy my harvest. No more unfruitful labor. I enjoy my harvest season in this fourth month. Pratoshata. I am reaping in this season. I have sown, I will reap. I will reap. It's your harvest season this month. Eshanda kasote baruta, imbrende goshe kosote. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Ezekiel chapter one, verse one, the King James version. Ezekiel chapter one, verse one, strategic scripture. In the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, on the fifth day, while I was among the exiles by the Kaba River. The heavens were open. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this month of April, your heavens are opened. Your heavens are opened. Say, Father, open my heavens. Let there be an outpouring of blessings. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, 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 pray. Open my heavens this month, oh God. 
Let there be an outpouring of blessings, an outpouring of healing, an outpouring of deliverance. In the name of Jesus, an outpouring of prosperity. Shemba la sota. Every closed heaven over my life, open by fire. You are not praying, you are not praying, you are not praying. Every closed heaven, open by fire. Tear the heavens open, oh God. Powers resisting my open heavens. Expire. Expire. In Marushe Godosikata. In Jesus' name we pray. We have two more prayer points. Please pardon me this morning. This morning by revelation. By revelation. We'll be praying for our Father and the Lord. Isaiah chapter 8, 9 to 10. King James Version. Isaiah 8, 9 to 10. Associate yourselves, O ye people, and you shall be broken in pieces. That's one. And give ear and all of on ye of far, on ye of far countries, get yourselves, and ye shall be broken again in pieces the second time. Say, get yourself, and ye shall be what? Broken in pieces. That is the three time, third time. Take counsel together, and it shall come to naught. Speak the word, and it shall not stand. For God is with Pastor David Uche. Stretch forth your hands towards him this morning. I say, Father, every evil gathering, satanic powers, demonic covens against Pastor David J. Cut fire. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. Cut fire. Evil gathering, satanic powers, demonic covens, demonic altars. Reason up against your son. Catch fire. Pray, 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 pray. If you are praying for him, you are praying for yourself. Every evil spoken word against the VJ. Back to sender. Back to sender. Evil incantation. Occultic counsels against Pastor David DJ. Scatter. Scatter. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' name we pray. One more prayer for him. Jeremiah chapter 1, 18 to 19. King James Version. Jeremiah 1, 18 to 19. For behold, I have made thee this day a defensed city and an iron pillar and brazen walls against the whole land against the kings of Judah, against the princes thereof, against the priests thereof, and against the people of the land. Verse 19. And they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, said the Lord, to deliver Pastor David E.J. Shake your heart towards him again. And say, Father, build a wall around your son, a wall of fire, a wall of protection, a wall of touch not. Pray, 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 pray. He it dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He no power shall prevail against him. No demonic power shall prevail against him. In the name of Jesus, as the wall surround Jerusalem, surround your soul with fire, with fire. So shall it be. If you believe in shot fire. Amen. Good morning, church. You are welcome to today's awesome Thanksgiving service. This is our CCG River of Life Church, where the supernatural is our natural. Please listen to the following announcements. Brethren, those with testimonies, please see Deacon Io in the back of the auditorium. Again, those with testimonies, please see Deacon Io in the back of the auditorium. The days of our meetings are now as follow. Tuesdays are our prayer meeting days, and they hold on Zoom. The meeting ID is 979-029-8065, and the passcode is intercede. Time is 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. 
Please join the Interactive Faith Clinic every Thursday. Time is 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Vigil holds every Friday on our YouTube channel as well as the church website and Facebook. And time is now 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Mothers Connect holds every Saturday on Zoom as well as Facebook Live. And the meeting ID is 823-2511-4925. And the passcode is intercede. This prayer meeting is packaged to meet the spiritual needs of every woman. Time is 8 a.m. Attention, brethren. Church evangelism holds every second Saturday of the month by 10 a.m. Please make yourselves available and plan to be a part of it. God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Workers' meeting holds every second Sunday of the month after service, and all workers are to attend as this meeting is mandatory for all workers. House Fellowship holds every Sunday on Zoom by 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. prompt, with the exception of the first Sunday of the month. The meeting ID is 979-029-8065, and the passcode is intercede. Brethren, please take note that as this is the first Sunday of the month, House Fellowship will not be holding this evening. God bless you as you join for future meetings in Jesus' name. Ignite for Christ presents the Healing Stream, which will be holding this Saturday, April 13th by 4 p.m. prompt. The theme is Take Away the Stone. Be prepared for an amazing time of worship and fellowship in his presence. Also, please take note that i for c is now opening up volunteers for sub-teams. The QR code is in the group chat if you are not on the forum please see Bro Mike or any of the other leaders of I4C to be added so you can sign up to be a part of sub-teams. And God bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. The RCCG River of Life Men's Fellowship is launching their first ever magazine, The Pillar Magazine. Don't miss out on this opportunity to showcase your business to a wider audience while marketing your products and services. The magazine will be launching very soon, and for more information and to reserve a space for advert placements or congratulatory messages in the magazine, please contact Brobio or Deacon Shegum, as today is the last day to submit your adverts. Again, today is the last day to submit your adverts for the magazine. This is a notice to all women. All women should wait immediately after the service for a meeting with the woman's leader, Sister Dupwe, again, all women wait immediately after the service for a meeting. Transportation services are available every Sunday. Please text 240-398-6946 by Thursday of each week. Again, that number is 240-398-6946 by Thursday of each week. And leave your name and contact information. Counseling by our Father and the Lord is available by appointment. Please fill out the form on the workers' form to schedule an appointment. Whether you are watching in person or here online, if you are yet to do so, please click on the share button, the like button, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for RCCG River of Life Church on YouTube and hit subscribe. Also, if you have not done so, follow us on Instagram at RCCG River of Life. And God bless you as you do so. If you want us to pray with you concerning anything, please call or text the hotline. The prayer line number is 240-374-2183, and we are available 24 hours. You can also drop your prayer request in the prayer box here on the altar, and testimonies will surely follow in Jesus' name. If there are any other announcements, they will be communicated to us by the end of this service. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you, and please enjoy the remainder of this service. Especially if it does not move me well. Strategically, if it don't place me, oh, I'll never be a man to you, Lord. I'll never be a man to you, Lord. I will never be a man to you, Lord. I will never be a man to you, Lord. Hallelujah. That is our testimony this morning. We will never be ungrateful to God. Hallelujah. 
If you are glad to be alive today, shall we put your hands together for Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. Except if you are capable of keeping your life till today, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. The Bible says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. A lot has happened. God has keeping us keep keeping you, keeping our church. There was a collapse of a bridge about 10 days ago in Baltimore. There, is all, there was also an earthquake. A lot of us don't even know about it. You will not know it in the name of Jesus. I say you will not know that in the name of Jesus. This morning, I want to welcome you to church as we want to give God the glory to encourage people of what God is still doing and what he will continue to do. Therefore, this morning, if you want to testify to the goodness of God in the month of April, please find your way to this side of the auditorium as I invite Mrs. Anion Lowo for her testimony. Hallelujah. Shall we put our hands together for Jesus? of you this morning just because of this boy Adeolu. I thank God for his life he will be turning 15 in the next two weeks I thank God for the grace of God upon his life it has been God all the way and I worship the name of the Lord for his goodness for his grace upon his life Adeolu, I appreciate you I celebrate you. Your children, they celebrate you also. And I pray that God will give you long life to eat the fruit of your labor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, church. You are a man, oh. You are a man. You are a man. I appreciate you. And I want everybody to help me shout, Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah. Nama you be. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Well, man, man, when I saw when I saw that that dress this morning, I said, Dickin, please give me your plug. Hallelujah. Amen. Along what to my Laura and me, Lord Jesus. We will be here when you celebrate hundred in Jesus' name. Amen. And it will be in this church in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I want to see how Madame will say Deolu Deolu at that time. Hallelujah. Go ahead, ma'am. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. I just want to thank God for his faithfulness over my life, over my family. I, I want to also thank God because he saw me through my pregnancy period. Nine months was a really long month, but finally God gave me the grace to be able to push this baby out. You know, during the delivery room, you know, it's another game changer because, you know, even when they said keep pushing, keep pushing, it was as if the baby wasn't coming out. But I just want to thank God for the strength. There was a point that I could not, I was, I've, I've lost my strength. I was just shouting, Jesus, help me. Jesus, help me. Even the nurses were like looking at me in a kind of strange way. My husband was like, 
Why are they looking at you? Why? Because you're calling Jesus. I wasn't even paying nobody uh, attention. I was just shouting, Jesus, help me. I, w- I kept doing everything I could, but, but God was faithful. The baby finally came out. <laughs> I just want to give him all the praise. I also want to thank God that uh, in two weeks' time, on the 15th, God will be adding another year to my age. I just want to give him all the praise. I, I've been in good health. You know, then I used to fall sick like almost every month. But for the past, for the past month, for the past years, I've been, you know, I might just have just slight headache or pains and I would take a ibuprofen and that's it. I just want to thank God because this same sickness has killed so many people. I just want to say, Father, thank you. And also I want to say thank you, Lord, for this month. Today marks the sixth month of my son. He's half birthday today. Hallelujah. I just want to say, Father, to you be all the praise. The Lord gave me a perfect child. Hallelujah. I've been saying... I've been saying he's perfect in everything. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy, for your provision. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for granting him his prayer requests, his desires. I just want to say to you, be all the praise now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Sister Anne, use your influence to bring your husband to church. Hallelujah. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. I'm here to sing to my father because I have turned 27 and I'm grateful. I am so grateful. The song goes, On and around me has shown On and around me has shown Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? Only do run me a show. Only do run me a show. Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? Though my journey alone do run me, what's in my sorrow? On the door of me, I say, oh, oh. Hallelujah. Thank you. I want to Amen. thank God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Amen. Go ahead, man. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm here to just thank God for life. Um, Monday, I was coming back from work. I worked night shift. I was coming back, and I stayed at the traffic light waiting to make a turn. And lo and behold, there was a car coming on the left side and hit my car, and my tire went all the way to the engine. I just want to thank God because if not, if he has hidden my driver's seat, my car seat, my leg could have been broken. My leg could have been all out. But I want to thank God for life and for this church, for the covenant of life. Thank God for my family. Glory what, to what God. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord has turned it around. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Sister, bless him. Praise the Lord. Um, I didn't want to come out for this testimony because I was waiting for everything to be done until that song came up. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Um, I just want to thank God for my family. This year, since January 2nd, has really been tough. We don't know what we did to the devil, but God has been in control. Um, second of January might happen, but that will be a testimony for later. Few people here in the church know about it. Then on the 4th of January, I was in my brother's house sleeping upstairs. The mother-in-law came to call me as early as 6 a.m. that there are police in the house. I got to the house, about eight police officers, they handcuffed my brother. What happened? <laughs> like, it was like a dream. What happened? He, they said he shouldn't talk until he gets to uh, court. Like play, oh, he was going the next day. Like play. So it happened that somebody, my brother, gave accommodation that stayed in his house for 18 months without paying a dime. Got him arrested just for nothing. You know, my brother was actually supposed to press charges against him, but we begged him not to because of his immigration status. And he went to press charges against my brother. And like play, my brother was in jail for eight days. While my brother was in jail, his son became sick. Like play, they rushed the boy to the hospital. That boy was in coma. 
There was a day I, came, I called pastor, see, we don't know the grace of God in this church. See, this church will make you look better than what you're going through. You don't know. You see people in this church, you don't know what they are going through. But because of the grace of God in this church, you don't see it in them. That is one thing in this church. I called pastor, and since then, he has been calling me, asking me about my brother, asking me about his son. Um, the, my brother's son was in coma for, um, since January till March, end of March. And he came out, they said he had stroke, that he was brain dead. Like, <laughs> I don't even know how to start, but there was a day I gave his picture to pastor here when I was in the hospital to see him. They even had to use chopper, helicopter to fly him to, um, um, to children's hospital in this city. Then pastor raised him up and prayed. And ever since then, he has been calling me to pray with, with, with us. Yesterday, my brother called me that the son came back home. He does not have stroke anymore. He's walking. He's even better than how he was looking before. Is it not the grace of God? Who else did it if not God? Please help me to thank God. I'm coming back again for thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Last but not the least, Brakosh. Praise the Lord. The Bible made us understand that we overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Uh, a month ago, I was traveling. I told uh, our leader, our pastor, that I will be traveling. They say, God will see you too. I went. Uh, in the air, we have no control. But God's so good. A lot of things happening, turbulence. If you have not seen the real one, you think the one you have is better. But it got to a stage, I can't even pray. I said, Lord, when you take me down and bring me back, I will testify. That's the only prayer I did. And today, I want to thank God for Johnny Mercy. Thank God for my parents. Thank God for everybody. And I'm back, live and alive. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. For all this testimony and more that will come, shall we just say, Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration. We bless your holy name. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Lord. Daddy, we thank you. We return all glory back to you because it has been you and you alone. We thank you because it's the fourth month of 2024. We are here and will continue to be here. We thank you for the church of God. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you for the testimony that are bound in this church. Oh Lord, we ask that our testimony we know no bound in the name of Jesus. As we come next month, more testimony than this we are bound in the name of Jesus. As we go in the service, go with us. At the end, we promise to give you all glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you are glad to be in his presence, shout hallelujah. Blessing time. Blessing time. Yeah, I'm going to take the building offering this morning. But before we do that, we want to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 7. Scripture says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all that you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As you obey his word this morning, will God indeed will supply all that you need in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Father, we want to thank you for this morning. We want to thank you for the opportunity to give. Lord, we want to give towards your building. We ask, oh God, as we have given the seed, Lord, we ask that you water it. You make it to be abundance in the name of Jesus. Bless the work of our hand. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. And amen.
for waking us up this morning for making us to see another month we thank you oh God. it is not because of our righteousness we come to thank you for protection for preservation we bless your holy name we thank you for the gift of life oh just lift up your voices and begin to thank you ah oh. Ah. 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 Oh, we bless you. Eva, Eva. Eva, Baho. Mehalihim. We're here because of you, oh God. We're here because of you. Oh, we're here because of you. We are alive because of you. We thank you. Oh, just thank him. Just thank this God. You've been faithful. You are with us in the womb. You brought us out from the womb. You've kept us, oh God. We bless you, Holy. Sayli moho moho We come to raise the sound
welcome to the presence of the Lord. We want to bless the name for our online viewers. I prophesy that God will touch you, that God will do something new in this new month. Even as you're watching, just stay fixated. Even as I'm speaking, God will be touching you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 54, I want us to listen with rapt attention. Even as the Holy Spirit is hovering, the Holy Spirit is moving. Even as the angels of God are flapping their wings, God will be touching you as you stay focused. In Jesus' name. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud or shout aloud. Thou that didst not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes, for thou shalt break fought on the right hand and on the left and I see they shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited the title of my message is give God a song look at the number say give God a song to give God a song means to praise him to give him thanks God demands a song and we shall give him a song for he has been faithful. He has been faithful. Hallelujah. The children of Israel were exiled from the promised land. They were in captivity at this time. They were in captivity. They were mourning. They were in sorrow. In this scripture, they are described as barren. To be barren means to be unfruitful, to be unproductive. They are also described to be desolate. That means they were deserted, empty. They were few. They were taken captive by the invaders because of idol worship. Idol worship. They worship other gods. God ceased to be their husband. You see, it is possible for God to be your savior, for Jesus to be your savior. But he wants first to be your husband. Because he's the bridegroom. And you're supposed to be the bride. So when God is no longer your husband, when he's no longer your husband, he becomes jealous. He's a jealous husband. God is so jealous. He doesn't want to be number two. God is such, a, is such a jealous God. He's so jealous of us. He doesn't want to share us with anyone. He wants to have full custody of us. He doesn't want weekend custodies only. He wants full custody. He wants full custody. He's the bridegroom. He's the best husband. I'm his wife. So anytime God is relegated to the background, anytime we make him number two, he allows the invaders to come. Or he allows you to enter the wilderness. A season of dryness. In the wilderness, in your dryness, you are incommunicado. You lose your friends. All he wants to do is to get your attention. 
In the wilderness, God now begins to come to you. In the wilderness, the wilderness is God's killing fields. That is where he kills your flesh. The wilderness is the place of dying. He allows you to experience dryness. You lose your friends, you lose everything. That is when he comes to propose. The wedding bells rings again. And that is when God says, will you marry me? God wants a marriage. He wants a relationship. God is not enthused by religion. Just coming to church. Going through the motions. God wants a relationship. Hallelujah. He wants a relationship. So he will do anything to get your attention. If your job has taken first place, God can make you lose your job because he, he, he wants you. He begins to woo you. He begins to woo you. If your friends have become your preoccupation, he will make your friends to leave you because he wants your attention. Hallelujah. Let's see Hosea chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Spirit moving in this place. My God. He says, I will punish her for all those times when she burned incense to her images of Baal. Baal was the God of prosperity, the God of fertility. The children of Israel started to worship this man-made God. When she put on her earrings and jewels and went out to look for her lovers, but forgot all about me. God is jealous, says the Lord. He says, but then I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert. My God. He says, to win you back, he will lead you into a dry place. A place of incommunicado. He says, I will lead you into the desert and speak tenderly to you there in the desert. He said, I will return her vineyards to her and transform the valley of trouble. In the, the wilderness is the valley of trouble. Because of his mercy, he says, I will transform that place of trouble into a gateway of hope. She will give herself to me there in the wilderness. And as she did long ago when she was young, when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt, he says, when the days come, says the Lord, you will call me my husband instead of my master. Hallelujah. He says, when I've gotten your attention, when I've made you to lose everything, then you will call me now. The, the King James Version says, you'll call me my Ishi. Ishi means husband, not master. Many call him master, but he wants to be called Ishi or husband. Hallelujah. Do you want to be married to him? Will you cheat on him? Hallelujah. No husband wants to be cheated on. God is so jealous. Our God is a God of mercy. He's mercy full. He's full of mercy. And God now visits his people in captivity. When they were mourning, when they were in sorrow, and he says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1, Sing, O barren, because at this time they were barren. They were not productive, they were not fruitful. He says to his people to sing again. God was demanding a song. Sing, O barren, thou that is not bear. You have, you've been childless. You've not given birth. God says, sing again. Hallelujah. I don't care the form of barrenness you're going through, whether it is physical, spiritual, or whether it is financial, God is demanding a song. God wants you to praise him. In spite of your quagmire, in spite of what you're going through, all he wants is a song. He says, break forth into singing. Hallelujah. To break forth into singing means to sing by force. Refuse to mourn, refuse to cry. Sing in spite of the forces and situations that want you to cry. That, that's what it means to break forth into singing. Hallelujah. To break forth into singing. 
is to sing against all odds. When your situation is saying you should cry and mourn, sing, praise him and give God thanks. God is demanding a song. Hallelujah. What he needs is a song. He's not focused on your situation. He wants you to sing. He says, cry aloud or shout aloud. Thou that didst not bear or travel with child. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants you to shout aloud to give him to give him praise. He doesn't want you to focus on your problem. He wants you to give him a song. All he needs is a song. The song has or, 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 or to praise him. Your song or your praise or thanksgiving has the power to break any form of, bar uh, of barrenness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is not easy to sing or praise or give thanks when you're unfruitful, when you're experiencing desolation, when you're in pain, when you're in the hospital, when you're going through trials in your marriage, or you're going through economic wars. It is not easy to sing. But that is the best time to sing. Many times we focus on our situation. We focus on our hurts. And we rob God of his praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And many always sing or praise him or testify when the going is good. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord at all times. It is good to give him thanks. It is for our own profit. God is limited when we don't give him a song. He even says we should sing a new song. But God is depending on a song. Hallelujah. Even in difficult situations, he's saying we should break forward. Break forward. Instead of crying, you break forth. Hallelujah. We shall break forth with singing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The devil wants us to mourn and com complain. And that is why he, he creates storms. He makes us go through hard times because he wants to rob God of what God deserves. God cannot praise himself. God cannot praise himself. God lacks nothing. The only thing he needs from you and I just to give him thanks. Hallelujah. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to give God a song. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to praise the Lord. It is good to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Is this good to praise the Lord? If it's good to praise the Lord your praise when you lift him up he will lift you up lift Jesus high lift Jesus high lift him up for the world to sing he said if I will lift it up from the earth I will Psalm 113, verse 1 and 7 to 9. Psalm 113, verse 1. Psalm 113, verse 1. It says, verse 1, please. Psalm 113, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's see verse 7 to 9. He raised it when you praise. He raised it up the poor out of the dust. 
and lifted the needy out of the dunghill that he may set him with his people he make it the barren woman to make house to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children praise the lord let's see the new living translation verse 7 to 9 he lifts the poor from the dust when you praise him there will be a lifting when you lift him up he will lift you up and the needy from the garbage dump he sets them among princes even the princes of his own people he makes you to sit in high places he gives the childless woman a family making her a happy mother praise the lord hallelujah so singing of praising god in your barren state in your desolate state is a display of your faith it is easy to praise god when the going is good but praising god in your barrenness and in your desolate state is sacrificial praise is high praise anybody can praise god unbelievers can praise god when the going is good but the type of praise god is demanding is even when the going is not good hallelujah even when there's no evidence you're praising god there's no evidence nothing to praise god about the type of praise that will even confuse the devil you see when you praise god because of things that is why satan had to accuse job before god he says he's, he, he's praising you he's worshiping you because you blessed him take away everything from him and see whether he will still praise you sacrificial praise is praising god where there is no evidence satan gets confused you confuse the devil with your praise nothing nothing no evidence the only thing you have is faith you praise god because of your faith faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not saying no evidence faith is your evidence your evidence you don't see nothing no spouse no child but you're praising god why because you have faith faith becomes your evidence am i talking to somebody here today that is the type of faith that moves God. He says in verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. When you praise God, when there's no evidence. Some people only give God thanks when they say, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. They give God thanks only when they see things. They give God thanks only when they see things. But can you praise God when there's no evidence? No papers, no spouse, no children, no job, no evidence. Where your only evidence is your faith. That is the faith that moves God, the praise that moves God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's see John chapter 20, verse 24 to 29. Thomas, the doubting Thomas. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, nicknamed the twin was not with others when Jesus came. They told him that Jesus came through the walls to see them. He said, no. They said, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. And my fingers into them. And place my hand in the wound on his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time Thomas was with them. The door was locked. The doors were locked. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. And he said, peace be with you. And he said, then he said to Thomas, he wasn't there when Thomas was doubting, but he's everywhere. He said, Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer believe he says my lord and my god thomas exclaimed thomas said i now believe and jesus says then jesus told him you believe because you have seen you believe because you've seen evidence 
He said, blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Faith believes the impossible. Faith sees what cannot be seen. Faith hears the inaudible. That is faith. Many people only praise God and give God thanks when there's evidence. But even when you don't see it, in your barrenness, in your desolation, can you still praise him? Paul and Silas, they were thrown into jail beaten in shackles and in chains but they praise God in their pain they praise God they did not focus on their situation and God showed up and all the gates, the prison gates were open God demands your son in the days of King Jehoshaphat they went to war and God said they should that the choir should go ahead of them and because they gave God his song, their enemies were confounded. Hallelujah. What God demands is a song. A sacrificial song. Praise. You praise God in hard times. Not only in good times. When you sing and praise God despite your circumstance, you shift your focus away from your mountains, from your situation, and focus on God. This is what pleases God. And this pleases the devil. Without faith, it is impossible. Your prayer and fasting means nothing if it is not backed up with faith. Because without faith, you're saying that God is a man that cannot be trusted. Hallelujah. When you go, when you go to work, they give you a paycheck. That paycheck is paper. That paycheck is paper. But you trust that when you go to the bank, that paper will translate to money. You so trust that paycheck that many of you begin to buy things on credit. Even before going, you trust. <clears throat> you trust paper more than God. You want to see faith. Faith. You call things that be not as though they were. Uh, you call things that be not as though they were with your faith. You have a dog called Lassie. And you don't see the dog. But you say, Lassie, Lassie, you believe that the dog will come in wagging his tail. Hallelujah. What you're believing God for is in the realm of the spirit. Begin to call it into manifestation. Am I talking to somebody here today? You're believing God for his spouse. Everything has been given to us in heavenly places. It is only through our faith that we will access the supernatural realm. Your faith, your faith, your faith. Can somebody shout Hallelujah. 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 You don't see it, but you believe it. The Kishego has a car. How do I know he has a car? Because I see the key of the car. The key is your faith. You cannot drive your car into this place. Your car is in the parking lot. Right? There's a spiritual parking lot. What well, That key is your faith. Hallelujah. The Bible says your title deed. How do I know you have a house? All I need to see is your title deed, not the house. You can't bring your house in here. So when you have the title, when God sees that key, then you're telling God that although I don't see the car, it is in the spiritual parking lot. I begin to praise God for you. You don't have to see it before you. You're believing God for a child. You're believing God for a spouse. God wants something to you to hold. The wedding suit. The wedding gown as a faith, as your faith. No evidence. God wants you to display your faith, to sing, even in the midst of chaos. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When you give him sacrificial praise, he comes to restore. He comes, that is the praise that invites God. That is the praise that means, look, I trust you. Because you said it, I can take you to the bank. Not all this praise, people praising God because you got a job. No, 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 no. Even the devil can praise God. The type of praise that God is looking for is sacrificial praise. Singing in the midst of pain. Then he comes to restore. Restoration is the act of restoring something to his former condition or owner. But when God restores, he even does better than what you were before. He comes to improve on your circumstance. Hallelujah. 
For let's see Isaiah 54 verse 1. He says, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, says the Lord. God says that he will give you more. More. You will have more children than those who had children before. God always wants to do more. Hallelujah. And God comes to do more when you give him sacrificial praise. When you give him a song in the midst of your storms. He always comes to improve because our God always moves from glory to glory. Our God is not stagnant. When, when you give God sacrificial praise, there will be no longer the good old days because when God shows up, your tomorrow will be better than your yesterday. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. He always does more. He comes to do more. He always comes to do more. Let's see Job chapter 8 verse 7. The message translation. Job 8 verse 7. Even though you were not much right now, you're not much right now, you will end up better than ever. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, you will end up better, better and better in the name of Jesus. Better and stronger in Jesus' name. Stop crying about what you lost or those who left you. God always has something better. His blessings are new every morning. They are new every always new every oh, great oh, oh, great oh, Michael's mother here, I saw her. Michael's mother. Is it Michael? The camera guy. Huh? Joseph, Joseph. She stepped out. Where is she? Hallelujah. Let's see Job. God always does better. Job chapter 42. should people step up like that? Job 42 verse 10 to 13 the New Living Translation when Job prayed for his friends the Lord restored his fortunes in fact the Lord gave him twice as much as before may the Lord give you twice as much as before you see God knows how to compensate you for your losses Hallelujah. He will always give twice. Give him twice. Job lost everything. But the Lord compensated him. Twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. And they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of honey and a gold ring so the Lord blessed Job in his second half 
in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. For now he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 8,000 teams of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He also gave Job seven more sons and three more daughters. May the Lord bless you more. I say, may the Lord bless you more. Amen. You're watching online. The Lord will give you more than you lost. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ezekiel 36, verse 10 to 11, the New Living Translation. I will greatly increase the population of Israel and the ruined cities will be rebuilt and filled with people. I will increase not only the people, but also your animals. The animals means your business. Because in those days, the Israelites, they were mainly, they, 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 they were um, animal owners. I will bring people to live on your on you once again, I will make you even more prosperous than you were before. More prosperous than you were before. Amen. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. You will know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. Come. Come. Lift up your hands. I wish you were here to hear this word that God will restore. Hallelujah. Yes, lift up your hands. God wants to restore you for what you've lost. Just, li just lift up your hands. Touch her, Holy Spirit. Touch our Holy Spirit. Let her go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Both of you, ushers, lift up your hands. Can you look into my eyes? Look into my eyes. Look into my eyes. God will do more in Jesus' name. When we give God a song, even in our productive and barren state, when we give God a sacrificial song, He does more. God will do more for you in Jesus' name. I said, God will do more for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. More. How many of you want more? Leave her, leave her, leave her, leave her. Leave her, leave her, leave her. How many of you want more? You don't want to settle. Settle for status quo. Same old, same old. No, 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 no. You see, I, I always cry for more. I always cry for more. Hallelujah. More oil, fresh oil. Amen. He will do more for us in Jesus' name. Then in verse 2, it says, Enlarge the place of thy tent. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Enlarge when you give God sacrificial praise, He says, Enlarge the place of your tent. You know what that means? It means make room for me. When you give God sacrificial praise, He comes to do more than what He demands is room. Just make room for me. Are you ready to make room for God? Hallelujah. He says, Enlarge the place of your tent. That means make room for Him. Uh, you increase your capacity to receive more. Increase your capacity for more. He says, make more. I told a pastor who is my friend, they were meeting in a small place. I said, stop praying. Stop praying for increase. There's no room. There's no room. Make room. Increase your capacity to receive more. God will not give you more 
than you can receive. Listen to me. God will not give you more than you can receive. Or more than you have the capacity to receive. Stop praying for more when you have not made room for him. Our God is not a God who loves to waste. You're believing God for more? Make room for more. Enlarge the place of your tent may also mean broadening the way you think. Some people are narrow-minded. They are caged in their mindset. They are rigid in the way they think. Your mental capacity will determine your financial capacity. The Bible says, be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't have a poverty mentality. Some people have money, but they have a poverty mentality. Stop, stop. Don't have a grasshopper mentality. Renew your mindsets. For as a man thinketh, so he is. You cannot rise above the way you think. You can never rise above the way you think. Everything begins here, the way you think. Renew the way you think. Enlarge the place of your tent means acquire more knowledge, learn more. Warren Buffett says, if you want to earn more, learn more. Learn to learn. Acquire more knowledge. It increases your capacity. Acquire more knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Increase your capacity. Enlargement. Enlarge. Make room for God. The widow in 2 Kings chapter 4, in, in verse 6, when, when, when uh, Elisha told her, the widow, to go borrow vessels, the oil stopped flowing when there were no more vessels, no more capacity to receive. Don't limit God. Hallelujah. When you give God sacrificial praise, expect more. Enlarge the place of your tent. Create room for more. Create room for more. The more capacity you create to receive, the more will be dished out to you. Let's see Luke chapter 6 verse 38, the New Living Translation. Give and you will receive. Give. By giving, you make room for more. Am I talking to somebody here today? By giving, you make room for what? More. By giving. Give out your suits. Give out your shoes. You're just holding them there. Give and you'll receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Press down, shaking together to make room for more. Your giving will make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you will get back. My God, listen. The amount you give will determine what? You see, the amount you give. You don't pray to receive. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Proverbs 11, verse 24 to 25. Is somebody being blessed? I love to use scriptures. I stay on point so that I will not uh, stay, stay off. Just, I, I just love to use the word. There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. In God's kingdom, you scatter to increase. In the world, you hoard. You hoard. You put your. There is he that scattered and yet increaseth. You see, and there is that withholdeth more than his meat, but tended to poverty. If you are miserly, if money is your god and you withhold, say to tend to poverty. The liberal or generous soul shall be made fat. Shall be made fat. Shall prosper. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. Let's see. 
Let's see. Giving. Giving. When you give, you enlarge your tent. You enlarge your ability to receive, to accommodate. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to be enlarged. How many want to be enlarged? Enlargement allows for growth. It allows for expansion. Enlargement allows for increase. Hallelujah. You can be honorable. You can be better than others. But if you're limited, if you're limited, they may honor you, respect you, bow to you, but, and still you're broke. You're limited. Like Jabez. Jabez was called honorable. They can call you honorable, but you're broke, busted, and disgusted. You can be honorable, they respect you, bow to you, but you're limited. Jabez recognized limitation. He said, Lord, bless me indeed. He wanted an indeed blessing. There's an indeed blessing. He said, bless me indeed. A blessing that will make the blessings of others child play. Bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my territory. Hallelujah. Let's see. First Chronicles chapter 4. Verse 9 to 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. The mother named, the mother named him Jabez, sorrow, and sorrow followed him. Beware of the names you answer to. And Jabez called on the name of Israel, saying, The God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, that thou would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him his request. Let's see the message translation. Message. Jabez was a better man than his brothers. Maybe you're better, better qualified. <laughs> better, a man of honor. He was known. He was well known. But his mother had named him Jabez, meaning pain. And pain followed him all the rest of his life. Saying, a painful birth. I bore him in great pain. But Jabez prayed to the Lord God of Israel. He said, bless me, bless me. Give me land, large tracts of land. And provide your personal protection. Don't let evil hurt me. And God gave him what he asked for. May God give you what you're asking for. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you following me today? Is somebody being blessed? Isaiah 54 verse 2. He says, stretch forth. He says, God says, enlarge the place of the tent. Then he says, stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Enlarge, make room. To enlarge is to make room. He says, stretch forth. To stretch forth means to stretch your faith. God wants you to stretch your faith. He wants you to go to Esther Do what you have not been doing. Do something new. If you want God to do something new. Stretch your faith. Serve him more. Give more. Stretch your faith. Hallelujah. Amen. When you praise God sacrificially, because he comes to do more, you have to stretch your faith. Everybody say stretch your faith. God wants you to stretch beyond your comfort zone. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 to 15, God told Abraham to take a walk around the city. He says, as far as you can see, eh, so will I give you. Stretch your seed. Go beyond your locality. Stretch your faith. Stretch your faith. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 13. Jesus enters the synagogue and sees a man and sees a man with a weeded hand. The man's hand was weeded. The man's hand was weeded. And Jesus gave him an instruction. He says, stretch for to your, your weeded hand. Stretch it. Do what you've never done before. It must have been painful to stretch that hand. 
and the man did what it was painful and his hand was restored i prophesy restoration as you do what you've never done before stop doing the same things and expect more challenge god with your faith challenge god with your faith then he says spare not spare not enlarge your tent stretch forth your curtains he says spare not spare not means don't hold back don't be miserly don't be stingy god did not spare his only begotten son romans chapter 8 verse 32 god was not he gave all he gave all his last one don't spare in this season you want to see god move don't hold back your service don't hold if god says give a thousand give a thousand don't hold back stop trying to play safe what leaves your hand will determine what leaves god's hands don't spare not your services am i coming to give you somebody hallelujah many want more from god but they spare they hold back don't be like ananias and Sapphira, who held back don't hold back look at anybody say don't hold back give god your all hallelujah then it says lengthen thy cords lengthen you want to you you want a large tent you need longer rope lengthen your cords lengthen your cords hallelujah extend yourself then it says strengthen thy stakes you want to build a large tent you need a longer rope right then you have to strengthen the stakes or the pegs so that the tent will not collapse right it says strengthen you you want you want something big you need your pegs or your stakes to be nailed to the ground deeply so it will, it will be able to support the weight many people collapse under the weight of success because they not dig deep you have to dig deep dig deep in the word of God you want you're, you're believing God for big things but God says what I want to bless you with ah, ah, there is no support system you need to dig deep you know, we call our Bible studies digging deep, but you're superficial. You will not collapse under the weight of success in the name of Jesus. Amen. Strengthen, strengthen, strengthen. More support. Through the word of God. Stay in the word. Fast and pray. More support. More support. More support. Hallelujah. You need support to carry what God wants to give. When you give God a song, he comes to do more. He comes to do more. Then he says in verse 3, as I begin to close, he says, you will spread. Everybody say, you will spread. Amen. Hallelujah. Sacrificial praise. Singing in the midst of your storm, your barrenness or your, your uh, desolation will cause you to spread. As you enlarge, you begin to spread. I'm not saying spreading in weight. Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is not... Um, many, many come to America, even skinny people, they begin to spread. This is not the type of spreading. Say, so you will spread. Hallelujah. It says in verse 3, Isaiah 54, verse 3, thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. The amplifier says, you will spread. Everybody say, I will spread. I will spread. To break forth means to violently destroy the forces that want to limit you. There are forces that don't want you to spread. There are forces that want you to be local, to be church-bound. Spreading. You're single. You spread into your spouse's uh, life. Satan wants you to remain to be a man alone. Man alone ministry. You do private vigils, you're praying alone. Satan, he wants you to be contained. Every day you're holding vigil. You don't come for vigil. In your house, private vigil. I'm praying alone. Satan says, yes, just be contained. But God wants you to be global, not local. 
Everybody say global. Not global. Many specialize in church. Church bound. You come to church. God is saying, spread. when will you spread? He wants us to, to break forth. Break the limitation of church. Be without boundaries or limitations. Become a church without walls. Don't I, I, <laughs> denomination cages people. I tell you, come, you do like this. You do like this. Ah, you want to be an expert in, in, in church growth. Expert in church growth. What if God wants to give you a nation? What if God wants to give you a nation? You're specializing in church, everyday church growth. Church. Oh, let's do it as these other churches do. God said, break away from this limitation called church. You can never be of influence if you don't spread. Am I talking to somebody here? Satan wants his own to spread. He wants rumors to spread. Gossip to spread. Cancer to spread. But he doesn't want it to spread. You can never have influence if you don't spread. When you spread, you encroach into the American community. How can we be bound? You know, God brought us from our country and we're here cage. You have Yoruba church, you have Igbo church, you have a house cage in America. In America, you're caged. You eat your food, pounded yam. Salad, no, 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 no. You're caged. Once in a while, eat out. I might talk to somebody here today. Hallelujah. Break out of that cage. Those walls of limitation. Learn to speak like the people. Learn to speak. Improve, improve the way you speak. You're not in your village. Learn to communicate. You're speaking and you're the only one hearing yourself. That's not communication. Educate yourself. Listen to the news. Listen to CNN. Be relevant. I might talk to somebody here today. Broaden your knowledge. Broaden your knowledge. The only thing you know is that witches. All, the only thing you see is witches. Pastor, there are witches in this church. Oh. The only thing you see in America are witches. Every time there are witches, oh, Pastor, I pray that God will open your eyes for you to see witches. <laughs> My eyes were not meant to see witches. Hey, pastor, God, let God open your eyes. Oh, hey, there are witches around you. There are witches. Once I hear that, I say, look, this narrow-minded. No, 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 no. Instead of seeing witches, why don't you see angels? To see God. When will you see God? God asked Jeremiah, what do you see? What are you seeing if you're only seeing witches? Some people focus, ah, pastor, that girl, you see how that girl is dressed? You're looking at how people are dressed. You're looking at their tattoos. You're looking at this. Focus on God now. Did you come to church to look at tattoos or earrings or makeup or eyelashes? Even their eyelashes like Bob Risky. Focus on God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everybody say it's time to spread. It's time to spread. This church has to spread. Let's see, let's see Genesis 49 verse 22. Break out. Everything that says you're not spread will be broken in Jesus' name. Your businesses will spread. You, you will not remain single. You will spread your bank account. Your fame will spread abroad. Jesus healed a man. He healed, he healed a man. In Matthew chapter 9, two blind men were healed. Huh? And he told the people there, don't, don't tell the people this miracle. But they went to tell people. The Bible says his fame spread abroad. Let the fame of River of Life spread abroad. Amen. We are going to spread in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spanish church will spread. Amen. We shall not be localized. Amen. We shall become systemic. In the name of Jesus Christ. Without spreading, you can never be of influence. Am I, your business will spread. 
your ministry will spread. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be local, you'll be global. Don't be a local champion. Am I talking to somebody here today? Hallelujah. Let's see. Je Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 22. want to spread into the African American community into the Asian community want to spread to nations into the Caucasian community that is how to be relevant now Satan wants us to be shut in in the four walls of the church we are binding and losing him in the church while he's running the community the community is not safe drug addicts have taken over the prostitutes have taken over the streets but when we spread into the community, then we have influence. We have relevance. Am I talking to somebody? He says, Jeremiah 44, 49, verse 22. He says, he says, no, sorry, Genesis. He says, your branches will run over the walls. He says, you have branches that will run over walls. Can you imagine there's a tree here and the branches of the tree run over the walls? to be seen. That is influence. Huh? Your branches cannot be contained. They cannot be walled in. You will not be walled in by denomination. Nobody can wall you in. You will not be limited. You, you, you will not have boundaries. Am I talking to somebody here? I'm prophesying to somebody here. Amen. Your business will, will, will know no bounds. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are meant to be borderless. Hallelujah. Not to be limited by walls. Walls. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say influence. Isaiah, um, Jeremiah 49 verse 22. Amplified. Uh, um, sorry, Genesis. Joseph is a fruitful bow. A main branch of the vine. A fruitful bow by a spring. A well, a fountain. His branches run over the walls to influence others. If you're not influential, if you're not influential, hallelujah, I want to be influential. As a medical doctor, I want to be influential. As a minister of the gospel, I want to have influence. If you're not influential, it cannot be relevant. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to be influential. Amen. I want my branches to run over walls. I want people to see my branches. My branches will not be contained in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3. Let's see the message translation. Don't, don't limit yourself. As we praise God, there's going to be a breaking forth. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody say a breaking forth. As you praise him sacrificially, things will break in the realm of the spirit. There's going to be an enlargement. There's going to be an expansion. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3, message. Sing a barren woman who has never had a baby. Fill the air with song. You who have never experienced childbirth. He says, you're ending up with far more children than all those childbearing women. He says, God says so. Clear lots of ground for your tents or make room. Make your tents large. Spread. Everybody say spread out. Spread out. Uh, think what? <laughs> Every time you say, uh, he's a very big God. Oh, he's always by my... And you're thinking, you're thinking small. Think big old. Use plenty of rope. Drive the tent pegs deep. You're going to need lots of elbow room. Look at anybody say, make room for me. Oh. <laughs> You're going to need lots of elbow room for your growing family. You're going to take over whole. You're going to resettle abandoned cities. Amen. Let's rise to our feet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So somebody's going to break for with singing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to by force. By force. You're watching from that sick bed. You sing by force. Amen. By force against all odds. Your situation is saying, don't sing. Those forces are saying, don't sing. Say, I will sing. 
I don't go green for anybody. I go see. Ha, we no go green. Oh. We no go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How is he doing? How is he doing? Huh? What is the diagnosis? Okay. I figured it was that. Yeah. Kidney stones. When a man is crying, huh? when a man is crying, he was crying, right? He was in pain. Yes. Yes. It's either kidney stones. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So who is going to sing for us? Violent sing, violence. This is radical sing. Uh, vio, everybody say vio. Vio. Uh, see, I don't see violence sing in America. In Nigeria, they carry chair on the table. They will sweat and they'll be squeezing sweat out. They will take off their shirt. Where I come from? This shirt you're wearing, you sweat, you take it off and they start squeezing water. Huh? That is violence. Amen. Huh? Not all this psychedelic hamburger singing. No, no, no. no. Violence. Huh? Huh? Okay. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. If you're here, you've not given your life to Christ. You're watching online. This is the opportunity. You've been moaning. You've been groaning. You've been complaining. God says, just give me a song. You're watching online. Give, you're watching from the hospital bed. I don't care the diagnosis or the prognosis. God needs this. All he needs is a song to work with. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. You want to give your life to Christ? You want to renew your life? You, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, lift up your hands. Hallelujah. Saints of God, I flew to Puerto Rico on Wednesday for a wedding to officiate. Came back on Friday. Friday morning at the airport while waiting to board the plane. A young man and his wife, they came to me. So we started to talk. They were so privileged to talk to me. They say, oh, we, 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 we thought you were so distant. So the guy, the guy is a cybersecurity engineer. He teaches cybersecurity. He also has PhD. Young boy. He has PhD in pastoral counseling. He wrote a book that became bestseller, bestseller in Amazon within 48 hours. He goes down to hold TikToks. Young boy. I said, so Redeem has people like this. Why, why did they suppress me? Young boy and his wife. The wife is a civil engineer. So I said, wow. So he said, pastor, can I tell you something? He said, you came to our church in 2010. He said, the power of God moved so mightily. I gave my life to Christ. He said, I gave. He said, I'm so, I'm so honored to, to tell you this. My life has not been, since 2010. I remember that meeting. I think uh, Pastor Obi took me to that meeting. People were barking like dogs. The power of the whole place, there was total commotion. He said he gave his life to Christ. And his life has not been. So if you he said for years he was playing church. He was playing church, coming to church, but he was not a convert. So give your life to Christ. That is what will make the difference. You, you can fool yourself, but you can't fool God. If you're just a church goer, you're here because it is Sunday, because your work is closed. Give your life to Christ. So, so you make heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to give your life to Christ? You want to renew your life? Lift up your hands. Okay. Who, who is, who is tithes? We take tithes. Father, we thank you for answer prayers. Thank you for this enlargement. Thank you, O oh God, for spreading. River of life can never be contained. We can never be contained. We we'll begin to influence lives. We we'll begin to influence others in the name of Jesus. The anointing for fruitfulness. The anointing for enlargement. Lord, we shall be strengthened. Success will not cause us to collapse. In the name of Jesus. From today, we shall spread to the north. We shall spread to the south. We shall spread to the east. We shall spread to the west. In the name of Jesus. Our branches will extend beyond walls. For, the life, for, for people to see. We shall begin to touch lives. In the name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you. We give you praise. Even as we begin to praise you, let there be an unction that will bust limitations, boundaries in the name of Jesus. We bless you, O oh God. We give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can someone tell your neighbor, say, think big. Amen. So immediately after our tithe and offering, we shall be taking the thanksgiving offering. Usher, please, can you bring the bowl to the front? And for the tithe this morning, I'm going to read from the book of Leviticus chapter 27, verse 30. And the Bible says, A tithe of everything from the land, whether grain from the soil or fruit from the trees, belongs to who? Belongs to God. And it is holy to the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. We have various platforms to give our tithe this morning. We can go to the church website. We can click the word give. The system is going to direct us. Or we can send our tithe to 301-691-3800 or Truzel or Cash Up. Or Cash Up. And as we do, the Almighty God will bless us this morning. We have the POS here. So all you need to do, just signify to any of the ushers. They will help you to charge your card right away. Are we ready to give this morning? Are we ready to give this morning? Shall we pray? Father, we just want to thank you one more time. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity to see another beautiful and wonderful day. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to sow a seed this morning. Father, we also want to appreciate you for accepting our seed and for accepting us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, King of glory, we pray this morning that money shall never be our problem anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray this morning that the fountain of our blessings, they shall never run dry in the mighty name of Jesus. Where others failed, we shall succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray this morning that our lives, they will encounter the kind of blessing that will disgrace poverty upon our lives. So shall it be this morning in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be alone. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be alone. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be alone. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be alone.
for our Thanksgiving offering, so we should start dancing from the back, please. Thank you. Say Yeshua. I'm 
Hallelujah. Are you excited? As you were dancing, you were spreading. Look at everybody say, give me a chance to spread. Give me a chance, oh, give me a chance. Hallelujah. You will spread and spread and take over what belongs to your enemies in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're here to dedicate baby Jonathan Henry. So let all the friends and well wishes dance along. Amen. Okay. God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God, for sister, prophetess, angel, and her husband. Thank you, O oh God, for what you have done for this family. Thank you for this baby. Thank you for the husband. The husband, Angel's husband passed his exams and 
And you've marched for John Hopkins, right? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. I see light on Jonathan. Father, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate Jonathan Henry to this altar, the fourth month, the seventh day, 2024. He will be light. His light is unquenchable. In the name of Jesus Christ. He will serve you and serve you alone. He will be a fruitful bow. Planted by the river of living waters. Lord, his tent will be enlarged. He will spread. He will be a prophet to his generation. He will influence lives. He will lead many to Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let your hand rest upon him mightily. Bless him abundantly. Begin to use him even at an early age. Let the world know that this one is different. Lord, he has come with keys, oh God. Keys to the Henry family. Doors that were shut will be open. Lord, deploy angels to form an encampment around him. Sickness will not be his portion. Stagnation will not be his portion. He will not die before his time. You will satisfy him with long life and with salvation. He shall be called blessed. Blessed in his home and blessed in his going out. He will lead many to Christ. He will lead many to the promised land. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say it is well with you. Lord, today we mark Jonathan for greatness. His head shall be stronger than the head of his enemies. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of excellence will be your portion. You'll be on top only and never beneath. You'll be in front and never behind. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you. May the hand of the Lord come upon you. You will never forget your God. You will serve him. You will know him. The grace to be the father you've come to be, Lord, based upon him. The grace to be the husband you've come to be based upon him. Success will not cause you to collapse. May the Lord increase your greatness. In his kingdom, you will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for your daughter. Mahai ki kusu mahasini Allahi kailo mali mukutu ma ikikitum musum musum ina mahi kan mohosna ina hela homo ezaika uzonso ilihi moho you become a woman of influence Amen. your fame will spread beyond your lookout Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Lord I ask for the grace to be the mother you've called her to be the grace to be the wife you've called her to be. You will never regret having children. More will come in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who have come to celebrate with her, let it be an expansion. Let it be an increase. Let it be an enlargement. Let it be an enlargement. In the name of Jesus. I curse the spirit of barrenness. I curse the spirit of desolation. In the name of Jesus, Father, we give you praise for the anointing to conceive and to bring forth. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Well, um, we have um, Thanksgiving for... Henry and Amy, they got married yesterday. Wonderful wedding. So. So we're going to dance with them. We're going to dance with them. Come on, see what the Lord has done for me. He has taken away my spirit, man. I can let poor hallelujah bro. Come on, help me. Say it. Let's join them, let's join them. Let's join them. Media, media. Jesus, Jesus, I really 
dance, dance, dance. What are you turn into? You open the eyes of the blind. Dance with those who are dancing. singles were dancing, they were spreading to their husbands. As you dance, you're, you're just spreading. You know. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to thank God for Henry. I want to thank God for, for Amy. Henry, um, I met him about three years ago now. Is he up to three years? Yes. Very disciplined young man discipline full of potential very seedful when you're seedful you'll be fruitful your seed is the potential you see when God wants you to bear fruit he will first put a seed inside of you discipline kept himself discipline that is what I love about you amen that's what I love about you discipline he loves God. He loves God. This young man. God's hand is on you. And Amy, when I was at the wedding yesterday, doctors, there's one doc, Dr. Webb. He said, oh, I just, he said, I was her recruiter. He's a surgeon. He said, look, I just love Amy. Ah. He said, she's a fairy. He said, he said he had to Google this man spiritually. <laughs> He was giving me, he said he had, because he wanted to make sure that this man is for real. An American surgeon, he goes to Nigeria every year with about 40 doctors. Abuja, Port Harcourt. So he spoke highly of, I met another doctor, Dr. Williams. We used to be in Providence Hospital. Spoke, I said, how did you, how, you all know, uh, in, uh, she, uh, you used to work in MedStar, right? Or where? Yes. So they all have good reports. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, concerning this union, all we shall be hearing is good reports and testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, we seal this union at this altar, Lord, and we ask that you seal it in the heavens. Let them be inseparable. Let two become one. Amen. Let there be a journey of their heart. Amen. They will grow old together. Amen. They will stand together. Amen. They will fight together. Amen. No devil will be able to separate them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that your hand will be upon them for good. Amen. They will never know sorrow. Amen. They will never know lamentation. 
Anytime we hear of them, we shall hear testimonies. That this will be a model marriage in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for fruitfulness. We pray for longevity. We pray for wealth. We pray, oh God, for every good thing that you have promised them. The Bible says that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Lord, as your son has found a good person, a good wife, let him obtain favor. You obtain favor from God and favor from man. In the name of Jesus Christ. All your prayers, because both of you have come together, you will pray in agreement so that you move the heavens. In the name of Jesus. I bless you as one. I bless you as one. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, love will be your foundation. This marriage, this marriage you've embarked on, this building project will be forever. It will be forever. It will not collapse. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will be the third part in this union. Father, we give you praise. You will always give thanks. Testimonies will be your portion. I sentence you to a life of testimonies. A life of thanksgiving. Doors that have been shut are command to be opened. You will enlarge. You will enlarge. You will spread. You will be men and women of influence. You will touch the lives of others. In the name of Jesus Christ. No wall will be able to contain you. In the ministry, you will not be able to be contained. In the financial institution, you will not be able to be contained. You cannot be walled in. You will manifest. You will spread. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. It's time to celebrate everyone that was born in the month of April. So if you were born in April, march forward. If you are born in April, to officiate the cutting of the cake. Praise the Lord! Wow, this is amazing. So we are going to be doing something really good this morning. Um, we pray this morning and because this month is strategic, we are going to be uh, spelling out harvest. So this month is your month of harvest. So as we all shout, we all um, say it out, harvest, then you cut the cake. So give me an H. A. How. V. E. S. T. Harvest. Amen. I'm going to call on pastors to come and pray for you. Come together and take pictures, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your sons and daughters. This month of April, they will enlarge. They will increase. Amen. They will expand financially in every way. They will spread. They will not be limited. Every boundary the enemy has set today will break it in Jesus' name. You will fulfill destiny. May the Lord grant you your heart's desires. The Lord give you a better present to remember. And you will fulfill destiny. You will finish well. You will finish strong. Death will not cut you short. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will satisfy you with long life and salvation. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. 
Did you enjoy the service this morning? If this is your first time worshiping with us in this sanctuary where there is nothing impossible with God, can you just signify by raising up your hands? Can you come on, put those hands there? Can we walk up to the hope altar? Thank you. Can we keep clapping while they come forward? If this is your first time, can you step forward? Can you step forward? Thank God for bringing you to the sanctuary this morning. Who invited you this morning? Oh, they, they were here with the angel. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, stretch out your hand, people of God, and just say something to their life that they have come into the river, that the river will flow in their lives. The river will continually bring good things to them. The river will continue to take sickness away from them. Let us pray, let us pray this morning. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for bringing this ones into your sanctuary. We pray, oh God, as they are coming here, it's not by accident. We know it is orchestrated from the supernatural. We pray, oh God, that Lord, even as they have come, for this week, oh God, you will bless them. You will enlarge their coast and they will experience a supernatural wind, a supernatural acceleration in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because you will always be ahead and you always bless their home. Thank you, O oh God, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. If you look to my left here, we have some sisters here. They want to welcome you. They want to pray with you. They want to take your prayer point. You can just walk up to them. Thank you. Let's keep on putting those hands together. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, because we have a culture, a new culture, a river of life for people who invite, you know, family and loved ones to have a gift. Uh, so we have your gift. Um, Brother Henry and Sister Angel, you have your gift. Next Sunday, you'll be getting your gift. Okay? God bless you. Please invite somebody next Sunday. I shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know, say amen. amen. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to know, if you're happy and you know, say amen. Have you been blessed? Isn't church sweet? Huh? May the Lord add honey to your lives. Your life will be sweet as from today. You'll never know sorrow, no bitterness. You will testify. The Lord will enlarge your course. You will never be limited. Your life will know no bounds. In the name of Jesus Christ, anything that will bring about this honor in your life, I cancel it in Jesus' name. May the Lord crown you with honor and with glory. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will crown you with honor and with glory. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord heal your bones. May the Lord heal your organs. May the Lord give you life, abundant life. May the Lord cover you with the, by cover with the blood of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. On the highways, on the byways, the Lord will be with you. No accident, no death, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you. No sudden death. You will sleep and wake up. You will go out and come back. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We give you praise. We thank you for the covenant of life in this church. That covenant can never be broken. In the name of Jesus. For you are our shield. You are our buckler. You are a provider. You are a husband. You are the best husband. You will keep us. You will protect us. You will provide for us. 
in the name of Jesus you will bless the work of our hands you will bless our loved ones we shall not sorrow we shall not mourn we shall testify our prayers today are converted to testimonies we shall see the hand of God in this ministry in our lives we shall see your hand thank you Father God in Jesus mighty name now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shalom. God bless you.